Hey folks, I'm here with our great friend, Dr. Ian uh, Grayson, endodontist extraordinaire. And uh, Ian, I'm gonna ask you a question about antibiotics. What is the most important thing about the use of oral antibiotics and endodontics that our viewers should know? Probably the most important thing is the indication when we should be using these things. Uh, I don't know about you in your practice, but I see- I give them out like candy. Oh, you give them up like candy. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> well, you know what? You need this. You need this Instagram. I should thing. be watching you watch this video. It. You okay. gotta watch it. Okay. So, so what, should, what should I know? The the most important thing is to realize what are the indications in endodontics for right. using antibiotics, and the indications are fever, um, swollen lymph nodes, lymphadenopathy, difficulty swallowing, expanding infection, systemic signs, systemic signs. Uh, fever, malaise, any temperature above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, Th that's the case where you use them. Just because a patient comes in and they have some pain, no, it's not a good indication. I have severe cold sensitivity, bordering on hot sensitivity, Dr. Grayson. Should I be taking a course of Augmentin combined with Flagyl at the same time, just, just in case? Only if you want to upset your gastrointestinal tract, but it'll have absolutely no effect on your tooth. And if I hate all humanity as well, right? Right. So that we can basically create all these resistant organisms. Right. Okay, so, so then if you have systemic signs, you have a patient who's immune compromised or the right. immune system is not uh, kind of gauged for it, right. then you, that's where that's it's indicated. That's a great indication. It's a spreading for, right. infection, exactly. not local, because most endodontic no. infections are local. Right, right? And, and they're handled quite easily by the immune system. So a, a patient who's immunocompromised or a patient who presents who has systemic infection, so they've got a fever, malaise, joint pain, a patient who has lymphadenopathy, a patient who has difficulty swallowing, a patient who has trismus, a patient who has a rapidly expanding infection, a patient who has cellulitis, and lastly, a patient who has osteomyelitis. Those are all great indications for giving out antibiotics. Yeah, uh, and so if we give them uh, antibiotics, what would be your first choice? My first choice would be PenVK. And you ask why PenVK? Well, it's the narrowest spectrum. It's effective against most of the organisms we deal with and has the fewest side effects. Exactly, so we're not killing the good bugs. You're ki we're killing primarily the ones that are found in endodontic infections. Exactly. And it's true that it may not have quite as much sensitivity as Augmentin or amoxicillin and right. some of the other ones, but you know they also don't have as much collateral damage. Of course, and we always have the option of augmenting it with say something like metronidazole. No pun intended yeah. with the augmenting it. Exactly. Exactly, <laughs> okay. but we don't want to use that one. Right. So, so we always have the ability to change it. We can add flagyl, metronidazole, and that'll help us with the anaerobes. Exactly. So we give it about 24 hours, see how the patient's doing, how the infection's yeah. doing, and so on. And then right. we can always build on that. Of course. And if you wanted to build on it, as you said, you have the pen VK. What do you what do you add to it? Usually metronidazole. Right. Okay. And that's the most common thing. Yeah, because then that'll cover your anaerobic, strict anaerobes, right. and so exactly, and so on. And uh, if somebody's allergic to penicillin, what do you do then? The, the next choice is azithromycin. They have a Z-pack, or if you're in Canada, a Z-pack. Mm -hmm. right. And it's two doses immediately and one, one once a day for the next five days. And you try to stay away from clindamycin whenever possible, right? Yes, yes. Uh, clindamycin has a well-deserved bad rap for causing pseudomembranous colitis. And if, in fact, your patient were to develop that, um, you would obviously have some explaining to do when there are, are alternatives. Yeah, and you know what's funny is many people don't realize that augmentin and amoxicillin are also highly correlated with pseudomembranous colitis Correct. and uh, because they're broad spectrum antibiotics right. the broader the spectrum the more likely are to affect the commensals all right so cool so we know that we want to go with a narrow spectrum right. uh, in endodontic infections we know the indications that would be the ones that you just mentioned right. in terms of spreading infections or patients that have immune com uh, that are immune com compromised but obviously, the best thing to do would be not to just do oral medication, but to actually treat the source, right? Of and what is, this, what is the source? So generally, in an endodontic infection, it's the tooth itself. It's either pulpal or it's periapical. We can do a pulpectomy. If a patient, for some reason, doesn't want to have that, but they want to get rid of the infection, you have the option of extracting the tooth. As an emergency measure in many, many cases, especially where you have um, a localized swelling, you can do an incision and drainage, and that will tend to ameliorate the problem. Exactly. Releasing pressure, right. allowing drainage, all of those through the tooth, through right. root canal therapy, or getting a tooth started, getting some air into the tooth right. to kill some of the anaerobes, changing the environment. And obviously, the best antimicrobial agent we know is hypochlorite, right? So right. just getting in there and irrigating is going to be great. And uh, so that's wonderful. And if you don't have time to do any of that for an emergency patient, then what do you do? 
if you can't actually treat the patient, you've got to give them that antibiotic um, and arrange as soon as you can to affect clinical treatment. Right. Clinical treatment is the ultimate answer to the thing. An antibiotic is a stopgap measure, but ultimately you have to get rid of the source of the problem. Of course, if you're a general dentist and you don't have time to treat it, you also have the option of referral, which is a key thing. Um, so that's terrific. I think that kind of covers it all uh, for the most uh, part here. And uh, we'll come back and talk a little bit about antivirals and antifungals. We'll do it.